Rytec Engineering in Evesham. It is a fantastic machine shop, state of the art, new facility, 17,500 square feet if I'm correct. Really, really impressive. And even more impressive, the latest acquisition, DMG Mori, NLX 2500 700. Now, what's your skill set though, Ollie? Uh, well, I am a, uh, a miller by trade. Okay, uh, now, straight away, this is a fixed head lay, so why are you using it? Um, well, we, we originally got it to um, have a go at trying to make some milk parts on it rather than turn parts. Okay, so this gives you the flexibility to do that? Um, it's certainly got the power for it anyway. Okay. So taking a step back, what sort of specifications has this got in terms of spindle, turret, tools? Um, well, we've got a, on the main spindle, we've got uh, 4,000 RPM on that, um, with a super spindle of up to about 5,000, I believe it is. And the um, power tools, yeah. uh, we can run up to about 10,000 RPM on it. Okay, now when, when I'm thinking lathe, I'm thinking driven tooling, but they've got slightly different. Built-in motor turret, is that right? Uh, that is correct, built-in motor turret. So basically, it's got a, mm, uh, it's got a spindle, uh, what, uh, what we've got in the uh, milling machines, built into the turret on it, so it gives it an incredible amount of power. Okay, so a big amount of material removal. Yeah, really good. Now, next thing is, how many tools are you actually holding? Uh, we've got a 12 turret station, but then again, it's up to you how inventive you, um, you need to be. Okay, so you could t two, possibly four, on each tool station. Uh, exactly, yeah. Okay. Now also, I know Paul the boss is adamant to get you know, things running 24-7 or as much as possible automated. What have you done with this machine? Uh, well, a lot of, try to uh, make it quite simplistic. Um, it's a nice, easy machine. It's nothing fancy, no bells and whistles, but the general uh, layout of it makes it really quite simple and quick and easy to to get going. If you're doing a lot of parts which are using sort of similar tooling, um, you can just it's just a more or less a, a program change and away you go. Okay, so setting the tool, things like that. Uh, yeah, setting the tool, really quick and easy. I've even had my daughter in here doing it. <laughs> That's a great little testimony there. Now, but the controls itself, easy to use because they've got big touch screens here. Uh, yeah, big touch screens, but. Um, once you've navigated your way around it, you know where all the bits are, it, it's a really nice layout. Now also, I know we mentioned here that you want to keep the machine running as often as possible. What about um, setting up, warming up of the machine and also thermal growth? Um, to be honest, the, the machine is that good and that rigid, uh, we don't get any of them issues. I can turn, quite happily turn it off on a Friday, uh, turn it back on a Monday and you're only talking a few microns with which it's moved and that's even from a cold start. Really? So in terms of accuracy, my, you know, what sort of tolerance is it holding? Uh, we've been machining that uh, stuff which has been holding about 10 micron limits and it just does that really easily. And that's in funny, uh, funny material, aluminium, bronze and all sorts. When talking materials, I know that one of the reasons Paul bought this machine was because he saw some titanium being machined, a big chunk of it, and he didn't even know the machine was on. But talking of components and machining things like that, you've got some great examples here. Now, Talk me through this one. Again, uh, nice simplistic part. Nothing too fancy or anything like that. But um, again, we're getting quite a lot of material that we're moving out of here. Um, most of the labes um, with power driven tools, would, you'd probably get some chatter on there and it wouldn't be quite so rigid. Uh, with this, you haven't got anything at all. It just holds size and just cuts it beautifully. Brilliant. And that's been run through the bar feed as well? That's been run through the bar feed. Okay, thank you. Now, right, next one is, now again, I'm thinking aluminium, but mi that would mill part normally. Um, yeah. Um, we used to make them on a milling machine um, with an operator loading them, chopping them into, into billets. Um, since we've got this machine, a bit of two-inch bar, load it in. Yeah. Uh, four minutes later, you get a part part coming out and, and it being that good on sizing um, I could quite happily leave it all day every day um, and they'll all be right. Okay. What cycle time before? If you mentioned four minutes now. Do you know uh, with an operator we were looking at about seven or eight minutes. Right. So straight away almost half the cycle time okay yeah. I'm gonna snatch it off you. Next one now this what's it made of first of all? Uh, I believe this was uh, 316 stainless. Okay and looking at that really complex in terms of radiuses and things like that. Talk me through it, please. Uh, again, uh, just kind of broke it down a bit on the, on the CAD. Um, got a nice bit of turn part going on at the front there. Um, come in, a lot of milling again. 
uh, rough it all out with just one tool, come in, just try and minimise the amount of tooling that you got and just sort of uh, try and finish it all off with another tool. Use a small ball nose which we blend in the, um, the middle sections with it and done the chamfers on it with, a, with just a drill. Come in, pick up, take it away and then we're back to a turn part where we just bore out the back. Ollie, you make this sound simple, but with this machine, I'm assuming that's the case? Um, yeah, although it looks a, a horrible part, um, put it together with a cam system, and all you're doing is just putting a couple of tools in, put a billet in, uh, and just um, get on the old controls, and away you go. Again, making it sound simple. So quick, you know, you've got a great little overview of this machine, the yeah, NLX. A couple of quick points, why you like it so much? Um, easy to use and it's accurate.